All right, Judd Apatow, writer, director. One of my first jobs was writing the Grammys for Gary Shandling. I was uh, asked to send him some jokes, and most people would have sent him 20 jokes. But I said, you know, I'm gonna send him 100 jokes because I just want to be the person he can't get rid of. I want him to need me. I want him to see that I'm really gonna work hard and, and come through. And I think being in this business requires just an enormous amount of fire and effort. And you, you have to have it for the long haul because you never know when you're gonna hit. Some people hit when they're really young, some people hit much later. Uh, so it takes a lot of consistency in your level of, of effort and passion to, to survive. I was a big fan of the television of the 70s, all of the Norman Lear TV shows like All in the Family, uh, all the work of James Brooks, like, like the Mary Tyler Moore show. You know, that whole era was a lot of human comedy, like the Bob Newhart show, uh, and, and especially MASH. Larry Gelbart uh, ran uh, and created the television version of MASH. And these were all very humanistic and they were character driven. I love Barry Levinson's movies like, like Diner. And there was uh, Clerks, the Kevin Smith movie, the Doug Lyman movie Swingers that John Favreau wrote and that made me realize oh you can be scrappy and there are people like me making movies that's what i thought when i watched those movies like oh this is like this is my generation is getting a chance to tell stories the way they want to tell stories and i think when i got into making films my thought was is there a way to do an authentic credible movie that also can get to some broad comedy so with the 40 year old version because the emotions were real it made the comedy work better so I think in, in the early years of my filmmaking, that's what I was trying to do. As I've done more movies, you know, sometimes I, the balance is different. Sometimes I want them to be less broad and sometimes I want them to be less funny that I'm trying to tell a story with humor, but that's not my highest priority. E each movie has a different balance between comedy and drama, but I always feel like any good movie should have some humor in it because in life things are funny, even on the worst day of your life, funny things happen. So when when stories are drained of humor, it always feels to me like they're not truthful. The first time I saw somebody do improvisation uh, was in the movie Diner. I remember I would always hear that Barry Levinson let the actor Paul Reiser improvise a lot of these famous bits that he did. I was fascinated by that, the idea that the actors and actresses could make up things that they said in, in a movie. And when I worked with Ben Stiller on the Ben Stiller show, he loved to improvise. So I, I got to see them do it. Then later when I worked at the Larry Sanders show with Gary Shandling, during the rehearsals, Gary would play and improvise a little bit. And it made me realize that you can improvise during the early stages of a project. And if anything good comes out of it, you can put it into the script or just keep notes on it for, for later. So what, what that means for me is when I'm doing a movie like The King of Staten Island, we work on the script, me and the writers, Dave Cyrus and Pete Davidson, you know, we spent a couple of years writing the script together. Then at some point we have auditions and when we're auditioning people, Pete would read with an enormous amount of the people and that was a way for him to play and improvise and figure out who his character was and to hear a lot of interpretations of the other characters. Then we tried to cast the movie as early as possible so that we could bring all the actors and actresses into the collaboration and then we do early table reads and rehearsals. And in the rehearsals, you know, we'll do the scene as written, but then we'll play and improvise and then we'll do revisions and then we'll do another rehearsal and then we'll do revisions and do another table read. So we keep feathering in stuff from these creative sessions into the script. And then when we get to the shoot, at that point we have all of these ideas. So we've rewritten the scene as well as we can. But we also have maybe six or seven versions of it from improvisations and we've circled all the lines people said that we wanted to remember and maybe completely different versions of the scene we might want to play with. So for me, when I get to the, the set to do a scene, I'm not just shooting the script, I'm also trying to create a loose situation where I could reintroduce some other ideas that we like. And then at the very end, maybe say, now let's just, let's just play. We just got to get from this idea to that idea. Let's just do something else. Let's just feel it out and see if we can come up with something on the spot. And uh, for me, a lot of that is just looking at the set as a place to truly create uh, the best version of the scene. Knowing that when I get into editing, that process will start again with looking through the footage because I might have an hour of footage 
for a two minute scene and then you're writing again, you're rewriting the scene with the footage that that exists. So for me, the collaboration is about finding people that are comfortable doing that. There are performers that don't want to improvise it. And I think that's fine. I think that uh, it, it really isn't for everybody, but for certain types of creative minds, they, they can do it all day long. And Marissa Tomei would say, I'm not good at it, but then she was good at it and came up with incredible stuff. And a lot of the best stuff in our movies was either improvised or came up uh, or came up during uh, a rehearsal before the shoot. And that wouldn't have come up unless I created a space for people to share ideas with me. The key is not believing in yourself enough to shut everyone else down. When I have ideas, you know, the first thing that I have to try to figure out is, is this a movie? Is it a TV series? Is it a limited series? A lot of that has to do with how much of the story do you want to tell? You know, when I met Lena Dunham, she wanted to tell a story about young women in New York City who had just gotten out of college, who were flailing about, and they had this like young people's arrogance about the, the inevitability of their success, but they were just, you know, a mess. So a lot of that was about, you know, those immature years when you're figuring out who you are and about friendship and female friendship and clearly that was an idea that took six years to explore but then other times you know there'll be ideas like uh, the king of staten island and pete and i talked a lot about uh, writing a story about what would happen if you know he he had never found comedy and he was just stuck living at home going nowhere and what would that do what would that force him to confront He'd have to look at all the things that happened to him, all the obstacles to his success, to his mental health. And that's uh, generally an approach I take uh, is I go, well, is that a movie or is that a series? Do, I, do we want to do five years of Pete on Staten Island or do we think this is like a movie and we can hit this story hard and, and that's all it, it, it needs to be right now. And usually you just have an instinct right away about it. We did a TV show for Netflix called Love. And the idea that me and Paul Russ and Leslie Arfin had was very simple, which is let's do a TV show about a relationship, but let's just show every single detail. If they don't talk for two weeks, maybe there's a whole episode where they, they don't call each other. And let's just show the good and the bad. And if they break up, let's show the relationships with the other people. And maybe there are episodes where they're never together. And that certainly was something that we thought would take several seasons. I think that's what we're all trying to figure out now, which is how long do we want to explore these ideas for. It's one of the reasons why my movies are 15, 20 minutes longer than uh, some people want them to be, because I feel like that it takes that time to learn about these characters and to develop these stories. And when, when movies are 90 minutes, you're getting all story and you're not really getting that much character. And it does take time to get to know people, to understand them. Uh, someone said to me once, when movies are longer, you're saying that these people, these characters are worth the audience's time. Uh, I, I feel like human beings deserve just as much time as superheroes. That's my theory. I always tell people that you need to just make things. You know, it's very easy to write one script and then talk about it for three years. But the people who make it are the people who write a script and the second they're done, they just start the next one. And they're just being creative. A friend said to me when I was first starting out, that he sold the 10th script he wrote. And that really helped me a lot because I thought, oh, so it takes a while to learn how to do this. I'm not supposed to become some famous rich person on the first script. You have to be the person that hopes it happens early, but is willing to write those 10 scripts to make it. Also, when I started, it was hard to shoot things because everything, it was expensive. You'd have to rent a camera, you'd have to buy film, you'd have to have film developed, you'd have to get your razor and cut the film. And then who has a projector? How can I show you my film? You don't have a projector. It was just a weird world. But now with this technology, you really can make amazing movies on your phone. So there's really nothing preventing you from doing something incredible because you have the technology all day long. And if you really think about how much you make, what your output is, it's nothing. It's nowhere near what it could be. You could go out and shoot something every single day, some weird experimental thing. You could really figure out how to tell all sorts of different stories. And you don't need anyone's money. You don't need anything. You just need your own effort 
and your own time. Maybe you gotta force some friends to help you. And you could upload something to the internet and you know, a lot of times people could tell if you're great in like 20 seconds. Haven't you seen things where like in the first 20 seconds, you're like, oh man, this person's good. And you just feel it. And so I always tell people, just make stuff. Don't be lazy about that. Just really make stuff right. Get your ass in the chair. It's a very competitive business and you have to outwork people.